Hey, Metal Maniacs, this is Ross from Greybeard, and you are cranking it up on Dave Softy's Metal Meltdown on Metal Messiah Radio. Metal Maniacs, here we go. Please help me welcome to Metal Messiah Radio, hailing from Calgary, Alberta, Canada, from progressive death metal is Greybeard. Joining us to talk about the band's latest offering, Dark Age, released December 15th, 2022. We have uh, founding member Ross Anderson on vocals and guitar, and uh, you have uh, a four piece consisting of Amanda Borden. Uh, Bass of vocals, Casey Rogers on drums, and Guy Onright on guitar. Yes. Thank you, thank you. And uh, well, welcome to the Metal Meltdown. Thank you for this opportunity. Yeah, thanks, man. It's great to be here. Uh, so let's learn all we can about your killer band. I, I enjoy your sound of this latest offering, and uh, it's really great. When did the band actually form, and who selected Greybeard as the band's uh-huh. name? Like, It's kind of a weird story, because it started out as kind of a bedroom project for Casey and I. Um, I had some songs put roughly put together and I needed 
I've wanted to record them, and Casey actually is a is a really really good uh, sound engineer, and he he knows what he's doing as far as recording goes. Um, so he helped me out and uh, programmed some drums and played some bass, and yet yeah, we put a we did a like an EP, and that was fun, and that was probably I think that was 2016 we did that, and uh, I actually coming out of that I met Guy through, you know. He was actually a guitar instructor, and I started taking some lessons from him because he, he can absolutely shred, and uh, I, I wanted to get better at my lead, lead guitar chops, so I was taking some lessons from him, and I played him, played him the Graybeard stuff, the first EP, and he was like, yeah, man, you guys are really good. So next EP we did, I got him to do leads on it, which was great, and, uh, and from there, uh, Casey's... Casey's actually in a relationship with Amanda. They're a couple, and they have been for a long time. So I knew Amanda from working with Casey, and uh, she was like, hey, I play bass. You should uh, maybe, uh, we should maybe start playing shows. And then he and Amanda both kind of started working the angle on, hey, we should be a band. We should play shows. And so I think it was 2018 we decided to, to start playing shows. And, uh, yeah, we, we just started playing shows, and then we recorded uh, Oracle, which was our first album. Or sorry, we had what we had one more EP after that, and then we did Oracle in 2020, and then yeah, Dark Age just uh, just a few months ago we released. But uh, yeah, the band is basically it's kind of evolved that way. Um, uh, it's it's called Graybeard because I'm I've got a very gray beard, and it was it was originally my kind of pet project. So it just I just was like, oh, I'm going to call it Graybeard because that's kind of what it's kind of the vibe I got with my gray beard. But uh, yeah, that's the story. I see. And Dark Age really is a kick-ass album. Uh, uh, I like the vocal differences. I see. I, Amanda has the, the the clean vocal, and it's, it's you with the harsher vocal, and it makes a very good sound together. I, I enjoy the music. And this was self-released, or are you working with a label? Uh, self-released. Um, yeah, we we've just basically put it on ourselves. We were we did Oracle. We were we. We had a, a Canadian label put out some vinyl for us, but they they weren't in a position to work with us again. Um, so we just we just released it. Uh, we have some CDs and cassettes, uh, and then obviously on digital streaming as well. But yeah, it's it's self released at this point. And and you write most of the music, or you do it all yourself, or does everybody uh, contribute? Um, I would describe it as I, I kind of set the framework and the foundation for the song. Like I come up like. Like both Oracle and Dark Age were uh, are concept albums, um, different concepts, but definitely their narratives, their stories. Like the start, start first song is the start of the story, and the last song is the end of the story. Uh, but the, the I I kind of formulate all the riffs and the structure to the song, um, like the parts and the dynamics and everything. But yeah, everyone writes their own parts. Like I don't tell Casey how to play drums or E how to play the solos or anything like we collaborate on stuff like there'll be like obviously there's some back and forth on like sounds and mood we're trying to create uh amanda and i collaborate more on her vocals i know like when we recorded dark age uh like i don't know like i don't know how familiar you are with the songs but that whole beginning to the song dark age the last song in the album like the there's this really beautiful haunting vocal sort of harmony she does to, to intro it in it's really i love it it sounds amazing we actually just did that in the studio because i i kind of had it in my head i could hear it and i'm like yeah we should try this and she's such a good vocalist that she, I, I i know that she can just do it i'm like yeah we should just try this and then she did it i'm like that's amazing and we just layered harmonies on top of it and it turned out great but yeah it's it's kind of like i lay the foundation and then everyone kind of brings brings their own sort of flavor and and musical composition to it so dark age is a concept album yeah it is yeah oh, all right. yeah and... it was, uh, it's sort of a near future post-apocalyptic sci-fi fantasy story but it's to me there's a couple layers to it like it's very much um a reflection for me anyways of like not not necessarily where the world is going to head, but it's sort of like a, a scenario of like this is potentially what could happen with, you know, climate change and sort of socioeconomic issues and geopolitical issues in the world. Right? There's a lot of there's a lot of tension right now, and it feels like sometimes it feels like honestly like everything could just kind of crater and collapse. Um, 
yeah. but it sort of plays out that narrative of like what would happen if, right? And so it, it starts with a sort of a young boy who's watching the world collapse around him um, in a much more dramatic way than we are now necessarily. But he and then it fast forwards like 20 years where it's more of dystopia, like it's literally like humans fighting for survival, fighting amongst each other, like, and he starts to lose his mind. Um, so he's he starts to lose his grip on reality and that's sort of the next layer of it is is this sort of a, his struggle with maintaining his sanity and and his sort of his journey into madness and yeah so that's kind of the gist of it it's it has a really kind of bleak ending to it i actually it's funny i um because the last album we did oracle was very, it was like a dungeons and dragons module because i play I'm a dnd player so it was basically like um, like I kind of imagined a module in my head. I'm like, oh yeah, we should I just write a song like that, and or write an album that sort of matches sort of a module. And I s applied the same sort of thinking here, but it was more of a science fiction bent to it, or like this sort of post post apocalyptic piece. Uh, but the it's funny because I I wanted to um, ensure that, or I wanted to like I was having trouble. Um, connecting the story with this one because Oracle it seemed very obvious to me it was like yeah, yeah I can pick out the story if I read the lyrics this one it's a bit more abstract I guess and I was like man I know what the story is about but if you're just reading the lyrics you might be like I, I don't see the connection so on a whim one night I wrote a graphic novel script and I found an illustrator and and anyone who, who buys the album on Bandcamp uh, will get a copy a download of the of the of the graphic novel as well so that's sort of a cool added bonus that's awesome and uh th this i was looking for videos actually for this offering i didn't see any on your youtube channel oh, but th they're definitely they're, they are out there where could i find yeah. them oh man it, it's we sh if you search graybeard and then the name of the song you're like i think we we have lyric videos for uh boreal decimation uh, Dark Age has a video. Uh, Vultures has a video. Just let me check my folder. Here one second. All right. Well, thank you for that information because yeah. I was looking for Greybeard and I saw there was like, uh, I guess you call it uh, music, uh, MP, MP3 type of, if you want to call them videos, audio videos. But yeah. I was looking for like, uh, you know, other kinds like, like you said, lyric video or music videos. Yeah. I yeah, didn't say any on, on, the, on the Greybeard gray page though. Maybe there's another yeah, one. There's a couple. You know what's funny? Because I think there's a couple different people publishing stuff. I know oh. the we we went through CD Baby to do our distribution for our CDs, and okay. I know they publish stuff automatically to YouTube. So that's probably where where you ended up. Uh, let me just. Yeah. Anyways, if you search if you search Greybeard, we're out there on on YouTube. You might just have to dig a little bit. Okay, well, I have to look for the exact song. I guess. Okay. Yeah. Thanks for that. Thanks for that information because I wasn't looking for exact songs. Just looking for you, the band and seeing what they had available. I didn't really see anything on the Greybeard. Uh, what I was looking yeah. at anyway. But now I'll look. I'll look deeper. Thank you for letting me know about no that. Worries. But let's talk about the production of, of the album as far as yeah, sure. what, what, tell, if you could tell us what, what studio this was recorded in and who was responsible for you know mixing, mastering, producing. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Uh, so this was. Um recorded here in Calgary uh, by Colossus Audio Productions. A buddy of ours named Scott Oliphant did it. Um, yeah, so he, he did a great job, and we actually we did this in a week, roughly. Like, we, it was great because Scott, like, Scott doesn't have a day job. Everyone else in great, all of us have day jobs, right? So we were managing schedules with, you know, work and everything else. So um, we were trying to cycle in. To, to do this and Scott was available like we we paid for a week and we we're like okay let's get this done so we did it asynchronously like um, Casey went and did all the drums on the, the weekend that we started he got them all done he just nailed it and then uh, Guy, Guy started in on the Monday sort of late morning early afternoon he, he went in and started laying down guitar tracks uh, I would go in in the evenings and lay down guitar tracks. Amanda would come and do bass in the evenings as well. So it was all sort of the only the only people I ever only Amanda and I were ever at the studio together. I think everyone else and I think Casey and Amanda were there together at one point. But 
everyone else was there by themselves. So it was very synchronous, but it, it worked out great because um, we were able to get it done really quickly because if we, you know, we didn't, we had really well done scratch tracks to play to. So we were able to like, you know, guide the drums that way and then guide guitars that way and everything. So it all, it all worked out really well. And Scott did an amazing job. He did the mastering as well. Like, yeah, it's a, it's a, I think it's a really nice recording. It's nice and bright, and uh, it's not overly loud. Like, it's not winning the loud contest, but it definitely is, is you know, got some, some good aggression to it and some nice dynamics and stuff. I definitely am enjoying it. He did a great job for you. I'm oh, sure you're very, you're very proud of him. I can tell. Yeah, absolutely, I am. Yeah, and uh, who did the CD art for Dark Age? Uh, yeah, that was me. <laughs> So oh yeah, that, yeah, yeah. So that was um, like, I don't know. Like Calgary is right by the Rocky Mountains. We're kind of like very similar to Denver. We're like basically straight north from Denver. It's sort of that sort of terrain. So there's a. I do a lot of like you know, riding my bike and hiking and stuff out in the mountain mountains. I really love it out there. Um, but there's this one hike called Tarmigan Cirque, which is. I think it's it's off the top of like the highest paved road in Canada. It's this road called Highwood Pass. So you hike, you can go up to the summit of that road, and then there's hikes that go further up into the mountains. And that's just one of the the mountains up in there in an area called Tarmigan Cirque. And obviously, I photoshopped it, and I photoshopped the sun in, and kind of made it make it look sort of crazy, like sci-fi, sort of primal, sort of cool looking. But yeah, the the, the picture itself was pretty stunning. Like it's. It, it was like this sort of silhouette of this mountain there with there was the sun behind it but not as obviously as bright as i have it there but yeah that i i that was it's one of those photos i took and i'm just like holy shit this is a great photo and i i just when i took it i'm like this would be a cool album cover so i went with it <laughs> thanks for sharing that story it makes it very well and yeah, yeah. how have how have sales been for you as far as uh well, actually, what formats is the album available on? Is it digital uh, and CD? Yeah, it's all digital. Obviously, we're on all the all the streaming platforms known to mankind, I believe. Um, and it's also we have CDs as well. Uh, sales haven't been great. I mean, it's I mean, I'll be honest. Like the metal, the metal community, metal scene is there's a lot of really good music and good bands out there. So it's it's pretty tough to to kind of find it find your foothold, I think. But I mean, we've had decent. It's been fine for us for for an indie band from Canada who you know we don't we don't tour or anything, so it's not like we're getting any sort of a lot of big exposure to new audiences. So yeah, it's it's been good. Like I'm I'm not disappointed with it, but yeah. Let, let's share some sell more. <laughs> yeah, let let's share some links that we could help you to get more support. I know you have your band camp you mentioned. That's yeah. Greybeard um, dash yyc dot bandcamp dot com. Uh, let me just make sure that is correct. That sounds right. Yeah, graveyard-yyc.bandcamp.com. Yep. And what's the YYC? What's that stand that's for? The Al that's the Calgary Airport Code. Oh, okay. Interesting. Because I see yeah. you have that as your Facebook also. Facebook, yeah. you have Graybeard YYC. And then you have your Instagram also. It's just graybeard.metal. Yeah, I wish I would have taken graveyard.metal into the YYC, but that's it's done. I, I can't yeah. go back and redo it, but if, yeah. I, if I could have done it again, I would have done it differently. I hear you. So you have the, the digital download and you have the CD. Do you have any shirts available, anything yeah, like yeah, that? Yeah, Bandcamp, you can get... Um, let me just have a look here. What can we get on Bandcamp? Where's the merch tab? Yeah, we've got... Uh, I don't have the cassettes listed. We just got our cassettes uh, just last week. Um, but yeah, there's Dark Age... Uh, CD, uh, you can get the you can buy the graphic novel if you don't want to buy the the CD, but the graphic novel comes free with the CD. Or if you download, if you pay for it digitally through Bandcamp, uh, we have Oracle vinyl, and then we have four different T-shirts as well. So That's lots cool. lots to choose from there, and it's all in Canadian dollars, so it's cheap for you guys. Very cool, Canadian dollars. Okay, Canadian I, dollars. I, I, yeah, I don't know what the breakdown is to the USA, but uh, it's about three quarters, so it's probably like fifteen bucks US for, oh, for a shirt that, or that, or like right. the CD. The CD is only ten bucks Canadian, so it's probably like six bucks American. That's oh, that's very fair prices for sure. Yeah. And now, as far as performances, you say you don't do all tours, but you do do shows, right? Yeah, we did. We just played. We did our album release show uh, last weekend. Very nice. You all like to yeah. talk about that? That must have been a highlight for you. Yeah, it was great. It was our first show in like 14 months because we played, 
Oh, when, what, what year is it? 2023? So yeah, we played like December of 2021 was our last show. And then at that point, I was pretty focused on learning the songs to record because I had already said, okay, the plan is to record in late spring, early summer of 2022. Uh, or it was spring, really. Let's record spring of 2022. So we played the show in December. We kind of shut her down, got to rehearsing did the recording. Uh, we, we were getting offers for some shows over this time. And we, I, I had basically said like, no, I don't want to play until, until we're, until we have this album done and we're, we have some new songs to play. Cause we'd been playing on Oracle songs for, cause we were playing Oracle songs for probably a year before the album came out. Cause we had the song sitting and then we finally got around to recording the album. So we had played Oracle to death and I was like, okay, we need some new stuff. Um, yeah. Anyways, yeah, we, we, we did the recording, um, and then I got pretty sick with COVID, so... Oh, I, sorry to hear that. Uh, yeah, I mean, That's... yeah, it sucked, man. Uh, but, yeah, and it kind of slowed things down a bit, and then we were, we had the, we got the CDs in, like, I think it was November or something, and we were going to do a release show, and it was kind of like, we could have done it in December, and we we're like, uh, eh, December, it's going to be... People are thinking about Christmas, and then, so we just were like, ah, let's just wait. So we just waited till the last weekend, and yeah, it went great. It was, uh, it was a good response. Um, sold some stuff. Really, really strong lineup of bands. We played with we played with uh, three other bands, so it was a it was a pretty pretty late show for us. But uh, yeah, it was fun. Our drummer actually Casey, he played in the band that played just before we went on, and they're called Mares of Thrace, and they're a really good band. So. It was, it was a great show. And then the, there was two other bands, Owls and Eagles and uh, Balragath, who also played. So it was all local bands, and there was a really, like, pretty decent turnout. People were into it. So, yeah, it was, it was fun. Were they all death-related uh, bands, death metal bands? No, not really. I mean, Owls and Eagles were, they're more of a doomy, I'd call them probably a doom band. Um, and then Balragath is more of a, more like, Similar, more similar to us, sort of more death metal-y, um, prog, prog feel to them. Uh, and then Mares of Thrace is doom, but almost post-metal doom, I would call it. Like, there's def- it's definitely, like, they're, they're getting a lot of attention, I know. Like, they're, I, they're probably going to be touring uh, quite soon. Or they're, they're going to be touring this summer and then probably going to Europe in the fall as well. So, yeah, they're, they're making a name for themselves. They're quite good. And they're only a two-piece, too, and they're super cool. Interesting. Now, yeah. what about what about future shows? Do you have anything lining up for you to tell uh, us about? No, not not at the moment, because like like Casey's other band, Marriage of Thrace, is pretty busy right now. So um, we're hoping to we're hoping to do some shows this summer. But yeah, not, nothing planned at this point. But funny enough, uh, I have um, an EP written because um, I I tend to write in kind of spurts, like I'll just write and a bunch of stuff will come out and i'll be like okay cool and then i you know work on it refine it a bit more but probably about not quite a year ago uh but probably like may of last year i had a spurt and i wrote like an ep um so we're going to be recording that in april so we're going to have some new music right away so it's it'll be kind of odd because the dark age is kind of still being discovered by people like and like, but like me <laughs> yeah like you and uh and then even you know we're gonna have something even more recent after that but you know it's all good it's for me i'm not i'm not really super concerned about the you know because i have a job i have a i have a full-time job and like I, right. even if i yeah. wanted to tour i mean i'm not prepared i'm not sure i'm in a position to tour at this point um but but yeah i i'm just really in, in it for the creation and the, the the creation of music and like making music with my friends and making something cool like I, I'm always just stoked to to record and then hear the hear the output right I got you yeah thanks yeah I appreciate what you're saying there and you were mentioning about the the uh, lyric videos do you know how many video vi- lyric videos you have out there and yeah man, you know- I can <laughs> I can give you some more details uh, I was just looking up my um, YouTube the channel. Uh, unfortunately, it's not a, it's not an easy URL to remember. But yeah, if you search, if you search at Graybeard dot heavy metal on YouTube, you should be able to find us. Okay, thanks for that. Um, yeah, for sure. There's on this channel we have uh, Dark Age, Boreal Decimation, Vultures, and Terra Umbra. 
Uh, and then I don't know where my other great. So this is one YouTube because we have a couple different YouTube channels. I see. Let me just check my other one. It's yeah, YouTube's kind of a mess for us. It, it's not easy to merge stuff, merge stuff in there either. Like because I know I was trying to merge stuff and I couldn't figure out how to do it. YouTube's help was terrible. Yeah, I noticed on on some uh, like sign bands, they don't have it on their page, but it's on the record labels page. Yeah. So it's it's easy to miss the uh, the videos that way. Yeah, but you learn sure. from, you learn from that experience. But I I, I realized this was self released. I says I don't know where to find it. So that's yeah you know, yeah. And there's some older to... stuff in there too. Like there's lyric videos. There's four from the new album that I put together. There's some live footage in there, and then we have one two two lyric videos from or or three lyric videos from sorry two lyric fuck <laughs> a lyric video from Oracle a guitar playthrough. And then a video that we made, like a super DIY video. And then we did a, I did this thing with Oracle where I, I basically played every song in sequence and then broke down the story. So yeah, anyways, <laughs> there's, there's some you. stuff out there. I appreciate the information. We could pass that along to the listeners, the fans. That... Yeah, if you go to at graybeard.heavymetal, that will bring you to our YouTube page. Are you, and then there's, if you go in the videos tab, you'll see everything we have in there. We've got... We've got nine nine videos in there. Of Great. Various things. Yeah. Thank you so much for that information. Yeah, no worries, and man. do you like to talk about your your guitars? Do you like to talk about gear? <laughs> sure, man. I'm not All much right. of a gearhead. I wish Guy was here. He would talk your ear off about guitars because he he's a guitar instructor, and he like I said, he can absolutely shred. Um, and like he's a huge Eddie Van Halen ha fan, and like he he listens to lots of really, really, really talented sort of guitar players that I've never heard of, but he'll play me stuff and be like, oh my God, these guys are amazing. But yeah, gear wise, I mean, I have my, I play a PRS uh, CE24, um, which I've had for about three, three, four years now. I really, really like it. It's, uh, it's a really beautiful guitar. It's not a super, super high end guitar, but it's not a cheap guitar either. Uh, it's a bolt on neck with, it's a bolt on maple neck uh, with a, I think it's a rosewood rosewood fretboard it's it's a beautiful guitar it's got it's got passive pickups but it's they're fairly fairly gainy i guess is how i describe them they're not like super high gain sounding but like it's it's an it plays really nicely though i, I really like it and then i go through uh i go through a marshall uh roadster is that, i think that's what it's called a roadster yeah the Mar or not a marshall sorry a mess boogie mess boogie roadster uh yeah which is a, which is a wicked amp it's um yeah, it's a it's a hundred watt uh, four channel amp with a with a it's called a modern metal setting on it. So it's got a super high gain channel. Channel four is super high gain, which is where I spend most of my time. And it does really nice clean tones as well. And it comes with its own reverb, so it's got a really it's a really versatile amp, which is really cool. Then I just play through a a Mesa Boogie uh, 212, and then Guy uses. Um, he uses a Fender Strat, like an 80s era Fender Strat, uh, for playing live. Because um, so he, we do have some songs with a whammy bar in them. Um, and he, but he also uses a Gibson Les Paul for a lot of the studio work. And he's got a Soldano amp. Is I think that's his preferred head. He also has a, an 80s era Marshall JCM 800, which is. I think that's the I think that's the amp we used for recording uh, Dark Age actually because our Scott the guy who did the recording we were going we would put our we use our amplifiers for guitar tones but then he, we'd use a modeler for this for the cabinet so they, it's not that we weren't he, there was no miking up of cabinets in the studio it was all done through a modeler uh, but then he, we he was able to reamp because I I recorded with my Mesa Boogie and he did it with his I believe he did it with his JCM 800, and then I think Scott reamped all my tracks through the the JCM 800 because that's the tone that we liked. Um, but yeah, like he's got those are those are his two. I think yeah, I don't know if he has anything else right now, but those are the two he's had for a while. Those are the. I don't think he's getting rid of that Marshall anytime soon because it's uh, it's like a highly sought after head, like original JCM 800 from the 80s. So it's pretty cool. It's a nice sound. I appreciate you letting us know about that. Do you know what, what Amanda plays for her bass and 
yeah. drums. Uh, yeah, you do. Uses, okay. Yeah, yeah. Um, Amanda uses uh, typically. She's got a Music Man. I forget what kind of bass it is. It might Music Man bass uh, that she uses, but she also uses Precision bass as well, a P P bass, Fender bass uh, for recording. And she, I can't, I don't know what model we did. We did uh, bass modeling software for her recording it was just straight into the board and i don't know what modeling we use but for live recording she's got a trainer uh trainer tube amp and a i think she's got a four some combo speaker i think it's two tens and a 15. it's a pretty big amp or a pretty big cabinet and it's she's got lots of lots of sound with her she can can fill up a room with her base, which is awesome. Cool. Yeah. So, what do you do? You mentioned about your job. What is your your day job? Uh, I am a, a UX design manager with a software company. So I do okay. I do computer build. I help build software interfaces. I see. That's and man, I manage designers who do it. Actually, I don't I don't do necessarily a lot of uh, a lot of design work myself necessarily, but I do. I manage designers who do it. I got you. And are you affiliated or associated, I should say, uh, with any other bands that you'd like to mention? Not myself personally. No, no. I'm. This is just it for me. I have. I have like a, my jobs quite full time, um, and I have a couple kids and a wife and a dog, and you know I've got a whole other life to me that you know needs attention as well. So yeah, this is this is enough for me. One one band because yeah, it's 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 enough <laughs> i got you i got you and at this time would you like to say anything to the gray beard fans out there yeah just thanks thanks for listening i'm hoping you're liking the tracks um yeah just keep on listening and uh drop us a line if you want you can get a hold of us through our Bandcamp page or through facebook like we're pretty responsive so if you want to drop us a line let you know what let, let us know what you think or chat about something we're happy to talk okay that's great thank you so much ross and thank you for spending time with us tonight on the mental meltdown on mental messiah radio and and teaching us more about great beard i appreciate your time and I, I wish you and everyone in the band a great successful and healthy 2023 now i've had interviews with bands from canada and we talk about covid i ask them how's covid treated you and they said nobody i know gets covid and you're the first person from canada that told me they actually got covid <sighs> yeah Oh, so I it does it happen. Right. It oh, does happen. Absolutely, it happens. I got it in Mexico. I was vacationing last summer in Mexico, and I got it there. That's where you got it. Okay, so yeah. it didn't so get it in Canada. So I got you. I got you. There was still travel restrictions, so I had to stay an extra week. It was brutal, and I was sick, and it was terrible. Yeah, I never understood how you know why Canada d doesn't get it because it's usually colder in Canada. And that's where it, de it develops. Is I didn't, but people I talk to says, "Nah, stop asking me about COVID. Nobody I know gets it." I'm like, "Really? Okay." But uh, yeah, yeah, it's uh, how it was how, here. How, like I sorry, go ahead. Yeah, no, no, continue. I'm sorry. No, I was gonna say like I, I've, I've known like I know Guy and Amanda, or sorry, not Guy, Casey and Amanda got it. They didn't get. Oh, yeah. They were sick, but not super sick. Um, yeah. I, and I actually talking to I know quite a few people here who caught it. I just I don't know a lot of people who got as sick as I did. So I'm I'm super glad I was vaccinated and everything else because I can't imagine if I wasn't I'd probably be dead. Oh <laughs> wow! So you had it, you had it pretty bad even with the vaccination. Oh yeah, yeah. I mean, wow. my va I the la I was probably the last booster I had had was well over six months. So I think because it's funny because my wife and my kids we were all in the same hotel room they didn't get it i'm the only one who got it and they had they had had booster shots like i think within three or four months and mine was like eight months since my last shot so i just think i was my, my system was more primed to be you know attacked because they had yeah. better defenses i don't know wow. that, that's a weird disease though right like or a weird sickness because you can literally have people who are asymptomatic or that you can be dead like it's there's the range is massive and you don't know how it's going to hit you until it hits you right you're like yeah i don't know how it's going to affect me it might be i have a bad cold or i have like a cold or i might be like in the hospital so yeah 
Yeah, I don't think it's ever going away. I think it's going to be like the no. flu. You got to you got to get a yep. flu shot every year. You got to get yep. a COVID shot every year. That's what I yeah, think. I d- yeah, I just got a I got my booster cuz I got I got home and I was I was like I was sick sick for about 2 weeks and then or maybe not 2 weeks, probably about 10 days. I and I got home and I was still feeling pretty rough and I had lingering symptoms for like probably 4 months. Wow. Yeah, I, like I, but my doctor said I, I just got another booster in just a few weeks ago, actually in January, because my doctor said right now you're good because you've just had COVID, so your body knows how to fight it. But you know, go get the booster in January once you're, once it's been about six months. So yeah. Yeah, but I'm I'm glad you had the the initial shots and booster yeah, this way you survived it because who knows. Yeah, absolutely. You know. It's a it was it's a crazy disease, and yeah, you're right. It's not it's totally not going away. We just have to learn to live with it, and people just got to be smart and just get their stay up to date on their vaccinations, right? Right. So stay healthy, Ross. And uh, you know, yeah. when you have your new new music, whether you want to do it for the EP or you want to wait for the next full offering, I welcome you back to the Metal Meltdown, and you could talk about your new music at that yeah, point. Yeah, for sure. Like... Yeah, we could probably come back and talk about the EP. We'll see if we can get everyone to talk this time. <laughs> we'll, we'll try to we'll try to work it out and let everybody yeah. can have, uh, have dude, a piece. I, 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 I can't you did a great job, though. I, I just want to thank you again for the interview and crank up more tunes off Dark Age. Crank it up loud.